Here we go. Stanford, Connecticut, our hometown. Been there? Just sending out a WhatsApp to my children saying, why do people take Uber from the train station when there's a line? Okay, like, what does Uber have? My question to you is credit cards. Just curious. Should they exist? That's why, no, that's why they take Ubers. <laughs> it was gorgeous this morning. I went for a nice bike ride this morning. It was it was a rainy day, a shit day even. When what year is this? 2018. Okay, so Hello. this is my velour. Two-piece juicy outfit. Truly a look for the gods. That I wanted to wear for the half hour, but I decided again. Because it was... Ooh. I'm really nice to my parents, just so everyone's aware. This is my dad. This is really technically uh, his house. Sounds of the city. <laughs> I also had a cold, I'm pretty sure. Do you, you hear that nasal? You are your dad. I know. <laughs> and I am the Joker. What are you supposed to be? As well. A whore. Okay, we need this album for my mom. It has pictures of all of us growing up. So boring, boring, boring. Then I get to me here. I was cute. As an infant, you were fine. Your mom looks great. I know. It was time to go to school. She pretty much said. No. I didn't. I I did get suspended from preschool for crying too much. Probably four. Your first foray into princess system. How did you make me go to school? Um, I kept you, they asked me to please keep you home because there you were we go. Oh, I didn't even remember I actually got into it in this video. I mean, One of my favorite things I to talk did. about. I would stay in school for the whole day. Little bribery works yeah. every time. I cornrows, so, so that's actually that culturally yeah. insensitive. But I'm yeah. fun about it. I don't want any gotcha you know, moments. Not here. Not I think that's probably for the best. It's appropriating and there's my dad, Woke King, because he's on Twitter. These are all pictures of other people. So, who's your favorite child? <laughs> you. That is true. I, I, it is true. I will vouch. We know, we, we know this. <laughs> well, there what we she have said. This is the athletic part, which like I was never that into. But then we get to the dress up part. Oh, this is where nice. I thrived. Yes, you did. Hey. <laughs> you shopping at the book fair already? Okay, but that outfit though. Literally looks. You're turning looks in this in this entire <laughs> thing. <laughs> look after look. I had a strategy as a child. I would just like keep asking for stuff till I got it. But I think that served me well no. as an adult. Well, <laughs> in some ways. Here we go. Now we get to the stand up. Where are we? This is Union Hall. In Brooklyn, New York. In Gowanus. I heard of right it. Right under the under the Bashi Ball. In the dark corner of New York. Hi everyone. Okay, Thank you so, so much for coming out. this Thanks is the moment where I here. realized that the microphone really was exciting, actually too low. Yes. But I said well, I've already started talking, whole day. and so I'm, uh, this is how it's going to be. He's stuck with one it. Whole day yeah. And, and fixing the mic can... Uh, and this I is my favorite to. thing to do, stand-up comedy. When people find out I do stand-up, there's like a broad range of reactions. But by far the most common is, oh my god, I can't believe you do stand-up comedy. That's the scariest thing I could ever I imagine. Could do this You're set so for brave. Yes, you could absolutely. But for me, it's not really about being brave more than my fear of embarrassment is outweighed by my constant so need for attention. So as this joke grew, it actually became smaller, and like, I Don't call me brave for doing comedy. You can call me brave for dropping out of college. That I was also already have caught enough. And I'm like, Upper class white women with wealthy parents and no degree. <laughs> what are you drinking on stage? That could have gone any number of ways it would have ended. I think I had a mixed drink, but... <laughs> I, didn't, I only took one sip up from it, like and the whole thing, and we had to cut it. <laughs> I did go to school for two years. I went to Boston College, uh, and BC is a great school racist. if you're an elitist. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> and I went there to study to be an English teacher because I wanted to change lives. See, you know, and sometimes and people would laugh at that part. There, and I found they out the teaching That's because they don't racket. know if you actually like know how to read or read right, right, right. how to use firearms. Um, <laughs> And then they told us that when you teach English, you actually have to read the books. Uh -huh. And I was like, for that reason, I'm out. So maybe that joke should come after. <laughs> Some of them are like from retirement. Long. Yeah, yeah. It's an option. But it wasn't a total waste of $100,000. Because I got an eating disorder out of it. Um, they don't know whether it's funny or not. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of... As I uh, grew, a study came out as a comedian, recently that said affirmative action has helped mm -hmm. white women more than any other group. And I just want to be clear, I didn't get into BC because of affirmative action. I got in because a very wealthy donor wrote me a letter. See, of right there, right before that, I looked directly into camera, and that's and something that that's something that's actually I don't call widely encouraged. Uh -huh. Is to kind of look directly into camera. camera. That's that's how all the best start. Break the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. It's like there for me to succeed. And I am actually living proof that even self-aware white people are awful. Uh, 
because as a white this woman of privilege, as I know that the worst thing you can say to me is that you have a secret. And then not for two years that is. joke slapped, and then it That's did not get laughs for me personally. And I had to cut it on this night or in general. No, um, in general. Like this night, it was fine, but you at know, a certain it's point, 2018, people just stopped right? People are getting woke. The secret part. Uh, and I'm from Connecticut. I come from a great family, so I'm like constantly checking my privilege. Uh, to make sure it's That's still there. That's a joke I wish I posted um, on Instagram. That's a classic. Two months ago. Because they gave Three you months take ago. It, and I'm like, no, I need it. Because <laughs> I just, I don't think it would read Can't in today's day. Uh, something cute that white people do white people is, stuff is um, uh, anytime they have this one though would that the diary yeah, jokes true. evergreen. That actually was one of my first favorite. Yeah, jokes we love a good rebranding. I wish I, I had that on the tape somewhere. last summer, and uh, I was Trigger. driving up with some of but, my friends, like, and one of them made a comment oh, oh, oh. that uh, the Jitney is just a name that white people came up with, so we wouldn't have to call it I the I never bus. wore these pants again uh, because I actually don't like them that And that is that 100% much. true. Like, uh, I, Hamptons are a really would, interesting I, place. Yeah. We were up there what just are they? parents They're just house. Adidas joggers. And uh, she asked me, do you want to go to this this You're still figuring out your, like, athleisure This guy spent $500,000 on a fundraiser. Um, so it's it's like benefiting charity and I was like of course that sounds amazing like what's it benefiting what's the cause and she said yeah you were there for this right this I, I wasn't there for the I went to a different benefit with for jazz it wasn't for jazz, jazz but there music. was a limited lobster and that's why I went and I was just so relieved and, and the thankful cost of that. for free that someone was finally raising awareness about jazz <laughs> I feel like not enough people know I about do it. hope Jazz what do you is know thriving. About, what do you know about Jazz? I know Jazz? seriousness, <laughs> like, I believe that white people are responsible for a lot of terrible things. Like, because of us, the Big Bang Theory has been on for And that seasons. was, like, my best joke yeah. for a while as yeah. well. That show has won awards, so. And then we pray for young Just children. Think we about do that. pray for him. We hope he's well. We're also, of course, to blame for this current political climate. Uh, I voted for Hillary. Clap if you voted for Hillary. It's not Hillary. something to be proud of anymore. Well, at this <laughs> time, though, it was. Because <laughs> um, it won't matter who you voted for when we all die from the effects of global warming. No laughed at that, um, but it is funny. And I know yeah, but, that but because everyone's like, yeah, we're going to die, you know. Ago, I still remember that night. I remember it vividly. Like watching the results come in, we seeing Michigan, uh -huh. you Wisconsin, were Pennsylvania, sobbing. all get called red. <laughs> and now whenever I see a map of the 50 states, I get like PTSD. Any time a Verizon commercial comes I, on, that like, is oh. true. The red map would Not be again. that was triggering. You know, because of all the red. <laughs> Stress me out. They just have great coverage. Um, <laughs> my straight white male friend gave me shit after Name names. the election. He gave me shit ben for being Hawaii. upset. He said, "Nothing Donald Trump does is going to impact you." But like based on my demographic information, I don't think there's anyone on Capitol Hill lobbying for things that are important in my life. You know, like a federal ban on destination. And now there is parties. one because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> You're just ahead of the curve. I, I have to attend more than five streets. weddings a year. <laughs> but most relevant to me would be government subsidies for laser hair removal. So we are. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. It's my really expensive, and I have a few friends doing it right and now. And I still had a bunch of uh, sessions and like, to well, go. They 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 already? Yeah, yeah, they never gave me my money back. They went bankrupt. A little bit. Because when During I'm 45, I might want to hear that. It was a little pre pandemic, but I can blame I just can't imagine totally waking fucked. up on my mm -hmm. 45th birthday <laughs> being like, fuck. I wish I had more tears. Yeah, <laughs> also, that joke's really good. You know, like, I just don't see that happening. And my friend was wrong. You know, He said that Donald Trump wouldn't impact me, but this presidency has been incredibly problematic for me because now I have to pay attention. Tea. You kind of took a break paying attention like shortly after this. Yeah, but then now I'm But I feel like you're back paying attention. <laughs> Politic back. Like, in the last 18 uh -huh. months, do you know how many articles I've It is exhausting. Of? Articles are so yeah. long. Uh -huh. I'm hitting the New York Times paywall every single month. Uh, and that had never happened before. <laughs> I have to march, I have to learn all these new terms. There's gerrymandering, DACA. Up until last week, I thought Clarence Thomas was a character from the Who is Who is Clarence Thomas? Supreme <laughs> Court judge. Okay. I do bad. empathize with Republicans, <laughs> though, because I used to be one. Shout out um, to her. Yeah, my parents are fiscally conservative and socially conservative. Um, <laughs> but I'm lucky, because they're not Trump supporters. Uh, you know, like, they hate taxes, but they're not absolute fucking monsters. <laughs> So I am, I am very thankful for that. They're very supportive of me as well. They're supportive of my comedy. My dad especially is proud of me for doing this because he used to do stand-up back in the 70s. And then he took the easy way out Flop. and became a surgeon. Um, <laughs> it's like nice I'm just kidding, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
lot of female <laughs> comics have like daddy issues. Uh, I don't have daddy issues. The only issue I have with my dad is that he has more Twitter followers than me. This is bold. Um, now I have more. By like oh, tens God, of thousands. That? Yeah, because he he's jealous? a successful medical we haven't talked now. To, I don't want to bring it up. And mm-hmm. I guess if you become an expert in your field over a 40-year career, people just like care what you have to say. So this is the point <laughs> in the set where I keep going. <laughs> um, to me. After a lot of jokes. <laughs> Because I'm like my dad is a doctor. I just I, I was ready to be done. Uh, they actually wrote a story I don't want to talk about anymore. Right? In the emergency room at St. Vincent's Hospital. <laughs> like a quarter uh, my dad of the way through. He's working his way through the nurses yeah. alphabetically by last name. A, a third. Of a third. Life. A third. Yeah, and my mom's maiden name is Wolf. That's so. true. Oh, there's me. There's you. <laughs> They I do thought Matt was holding a prompter during this. Uh, the house. I didn't see that. In has show. a lot of rooms. I thought it was um, too, actually. Some of the rooms have names. Maybe it was it a different show? You know, we got no. the living room, we got the sitting room. That's a room just for sitting. I don't remember. Um, we have the front hall, that we have the so dining beautiful. room, we have the breakfast room. And the breakfast room is where we eat most of our meals. Uh, I know that we were thinking of the dining the, room from for From one of the openers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but in our breakfast room, we have this lithograph that we've had forever. Uh, it's always been hanging there. My dad recently told us where he got it from. Uh, it turns out in 1974, he had a patient who was uninsured and couldn't afford surgery, uh, so he paid uh, for the surgery with the painting. And uh, I thought that was really interesting because I didn't know they were still using the barter system under President Gerald Ford. I don't know if that's the right president. And my dad didn't realize that the Republicans were going to try to use to replace Obamacare. I'll look at it later. They're like, oh, you don't have insurance? Do you have any any fine works of art? Does this still work, do you think? Maybe a marble statue? No, just like bartering <laughs> no, for insurance. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm, I guess if my dad's your surgeon, And this maybe. guy really needed surgery. That's what you're offering. Because he actually perforated his colon. Yeah. Yes! yes! Uh, my dad shouted yeah, gay And gay after rights. the procedure, he said, Doc, when can I resume normal sexual activity? And my dad said, I think we're going to have no to No kink shaming in this house, though. <laughs> yeah, also, well, that was the 70s. True. Also, you can't say the word normal anymore. Ooh, you're thinking you about can't say it every in any context. No. I just feel like that would be much more appropriate decor for the sex dungeon. <laughs> where is the sex dungeon? The basement. Sorry, oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I call the basement where I lost my virginity. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as it turns out, in the 70s, gay men would come into the emergency room with any number of things, like, stuck up mm-hmm. their butts. Um, One time I from, like, like to explain this to someone and they were like, oh, well, it's not just gay guys. Foot, uh, and I was like, bottoms. no, uh, okay, and sure. <laughs> for a long time they removed Anyone these things surgically. That's so true. my dad discovered that if you sedate the patients, you can relax their muscles and just extract the objects. Uh, and he wrote several papers on this. <laughs> Which were published, and it was actually his major contribution. Yes! To <laughs> um, and in doing so, he saved the assholes of countless gay men. So I guess what I'm saying is, my dad basically invented being an Which ally. He did. We march for him. We march for him. He threw the first brick. And whenever people don't talk about that, I know they're bigots. So the <laughs> what does that say about you? Um, so he gave up comedy for important stuff, and I think it worked out uh, because this Friday my parents are celebrating their anniversary. I think this was April 15th. Uh, they did get married on 420 because they're a couple of freaks. Um, <laughs> they will have been married 44 years. Mental love. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. incredible. Uh, it's, it's great for them, but I feel like a bit of a missed opportunity for me because uh, I would have done great work as someone's bitchy stepdaughter. Uh, the titular like stepdaughter. The titular stepdaughter. <laughs> You are not my dad. Thank you. <laughs> it's just like a small mm-hmm. taste of what I'm capable of. Uh, and I was actually a miracle baby because uh, my dad didn't want kids. <laughs> and they already had five. It's crazy that I don't think any of my I don't want kids so materials like, are in this. Oh, yes, it is. Them. It is, actually. Uh, and on top of that, the circumcision I, stuff's not. In the womb. I retired that for uh, like two years. true. And people often and ask me, like, oh, did which, you eat your Which, the circumcision stuff or the yeah. actual yeah. circumcision yeah. stuff? No, I didn't eat There are some ch- kid jokes in here. I never did again after this. What happened was we played rock, paper, scissor. I won. And then I absorbed its cells and became stronger. Of course, someone was like, oh, is that like a reference to The Office? One of the characters you know, in The Office. Some jokes I tell for you guys. Similar some jokes about I his tell twin. for me. I was like, not everything uh, is from The Office. Twins. Well, if you look hard enough, everything is Everything from is from That's the source material. Mm-hmm. But just like imagine if there were two of me. <laughs> that would have destroyed my family. And I stand by that. I agree. And we I have no interest two. in doing that. I love them very much. Uh, I was actually home a few months ago with my family for the holidays. Uh, Christmas. That's a good joke. Yes. <laughs> 
and it was a lot of fun, but it's kind of hectic because I have five older siblings, and my brother and sister have Watch a bunch of kids house. all together. Stream the birdhouse. Stream the birdhouse <laughs> on YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> Ew. But so with all the kids running around Christmas Day, it was like madness. And the day after, we were all just like down to chill, down to hang out. Except for one of my nephews who was having like a full blown meltdown. And I was like, Mom, what is Can't James believe I named, deal? T- like, totally said like, his well, name. Hmm. Were you not supposed to? <laughs> I don't know. He's, <laughs> He's like a kid. Yesterday. Kids have rights. Yeah, they're not going to, like, look him up. Right, and they wouldn't find The day dates. after He's Christmas for kids seven. is the equivalent Follow James of on Instagram. Follow James on Instagram. <laughs> You know, like, day of, everything's amazing, you're on top of the world, you can do anything. <laughs> Wake up the next day is, like, I wish I living. never retired um, that. I think so you I can felt bring that it back. And the next day part as well. But my niece, Ellie, she was down to manage her oh, hand yeah, a little bit yeah. differently. Which is uh, actually she just wanted to lay on the couch and watch TV, hit the vape. Um, <laughs> she's three. She is so. super chill still. <laughs> Uh, she asked me she's if we could actually watch Little Mermaid. She's actually the wisest and, uh, That was my favorite movie as a kid. So I said, That's of course, we could a watch Little Mermaid. Accent. <laughs> but seeing it <laughs> as an reason. adult was very different. But I love it. Personally. Because I realized that I relate to Ariel in a lot of ways. Like, I identify with her. First of all, she's literally a princess, and she's unhappy. I'm laughing. Yeah. <laughs> you are. She has a song about all the stuff she has. <laughs> but she's not satisfied. <laughs> She says, I'm the girl who has everything. I want more. <laughs> and like that's the level of self-awareness that I strive for. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> she also has two gay best friends, the bird and the fish. Cut to me. <laughs> Cut to you and Matt. Scuttle's kind of like I'm the loud it all. And then Flounder's the loyal twink. Am I the loyal twink? Um, those are very important relationships. No, you're the know-it-all. You're not. Thank you. That's I think the, the loyal twink. The level you know, I, I relate to her the deepest it. is how she is with guys. Uh, Because I'm also bored with all my options, and then I see someone who's completely unavailable, meet him once, fall in love, and I'm like ready to abandon my entire life. So this was phase one. (laughs) Change everything about myself. I'm like, bye, God, bye, Uh seventeen sisters. That's kind of how that happens. He doesn't know my name yet, but I'm gonna go with him. To be a I would never abandon my family. My parents still pay for some stuff. Um, (laughs) When people hear six kids, they just like assume we're Catholic. Uh, Formally. Uh, we were raised Catholic, but I am actually a Reformed Catholic now. Oh, we're called truth. atheists. It is true. That's what it's a very supportive know, community. I always but I want you to know that I still do have a place of worship. Uh, it's called Soul Cycle. This joke will be retired. I don't know and how anyone much in here do Soul Cycle. Soul Cycle. Anyone else? Oh, no. I can't really see, but what's your home studio? Williamsburg. Williamsburg. Oh, they're mm-hmm. doing amazing work over there. Uh, but I, I, I do think of Soul Cycle a little bit like a cocaine habit. Because it's expensive, addictive, and when we talk See, about it, for with the other do it. and for social cycle <laughs> yes, <fans>. yeah, <laughs> people can be very judgy. I've never been, wor- I've never been scared of any shit. It. Uh, but they are a little different though, because I do soul cycle twice a week, and I only do cocaine. Okay, once after every I did this quarter. joke widely, so many people would do jokes where it was My like once every fiscal quarter, and it's like. You were and I actually don't forget about where it started. Mm-hmm. I worked at the front desk, which was a lot of fun. Uh, they put us through CPR training where you give mouth to mouth to one of those like dummy people things. Uh, and I really enjoyed that because it's the first time I've been paid to kiss the shell of a man That's with no personality. Every time uh-huh. I was about to dive into that joke, I would say, hope I stick the landing. Like, usually I'll I just think do you that for free good. because it's a lot of words. But before Soul Cycle, there was Catholicism. And we were super religious. We went to church every Sunday. Great uh, I was segue. Like a total stan for Jesus. <laughs> and I was a stan for Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I would pray. <laughs> It was so creepy. And I retired that. I, only, I think this is literally the only time I ever did that joke. And I went to Catholic school good. where they taught us abstinence <laughs> only education. It's creepy as so uh, And that uses the word education well. pretty loosely because that implies that you learn something. Uh, it would be kind of like if you showed up to driver's ed and they and were like, this is don't true. drive. <laughs> and you're like, okay, but we're totally going to drive and we just want to do it safely. And they're like, do not drive. <laughs> And you're like, okay, I mean, the law says we can drive and we're totally going to do it. And they're like, don't drive until you're married and even then don't enjoy it. <laughs> the main message was that sex before marriage is a sin. And if you have sex before you're married, you will go to hell. <laughs> uh, and at age 12, <laughs> we kind of realized that hell is where all the cool people go. <laughs> uh, so for eight years, I was confidently waiting till marriage. I was like, if Jessica Simpson and you know what? Is, so can I. <laughs> I stand her to this day. Second most iconic virgin roles? in history. What roles? Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> For eight years I did. <laughs> then when I was 20, I met a guy I thought I was going to marry. 
Uh, I was 20, he was 26. I lived in New York, he lived in LA. It's I was perfect. like, there's no it, it, it's this kind of a fairy tale. <laughs> uh, so I lost my virginity, and we've been married for six years. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we broke up six months later. <laughs> And when I became single again, I realized that I had made a huge mistake losing my virginity. Uh, because being a virgin is the best excuse again, not to have sex with someone. There's really just, there's no argument. Like, nothing packs a punch like saying, I can't have sex with you, I'm a virgin. And that's probably why the second guy was able to convince me so easily. I was like, I can't have sex with you, I've only had sex with one person. And he was like, but you're really pretty. <laughs> I was like, well, that checks out. <laughs> yeah. You think? And that's actually what happened. You know, now I have sex whenever I want. I hope that he's doing great. well where he is. Okay. But I may have, like, gone too far in the other direction, because sex for me at this point is, like, getting in an Uber. I'm just like, This joke was still the talking. test of time. This slaps. Yeah. This will be quick. I don't need to know Didn't you. Didn't do that well this night, um, but... I would say the biggest difference is that afterwards, at least Uber follows up to see if I enjoyed my experience. You should try it with Lyft instead and see yeah, if it plays do better. That. I don't use Lyft. Yeah, I well, definitely put why? myself in some risky situations. Uh, and I'm lucky that I've never been a victim of violent sexual assault. It's always been very friendly. Um, colleague, an acquaintance, a handsome Danish man staying at your parents' house. That while is true business. as well. Um, We've all done that. We've all done normal uh, stuff. Who among us? I did fall in love recently though. Yeah, um, I was involved in a whirlwind romance. It was very intense, brought up a lot of feelings. Uh, and actually inspired me to write a book. This was... It's called oh, How this to person Lose a in Six Days. Two nights ago. <laughs> no and comment. the method's no pretty comment. simple. Like, as the woman, you're just very cool and fun and chill. And then you let his past emotional trauma still... That has happened to me so many everything. times. Even after this show. You're still and talking to him three really years does, later. Uh, we had a conversation about because what I have a we forgiving were, heart. Uh -huh. made sense because it was our fourth time hanging out, and he just explained that like he he's not like he's bad at relationship stuff and he, he can't follow his instinct when things are good, and like there I was a fool, thinking that the hardest part about dating him would be the fact that he had Woke herpes. queen <laughs> because I was I, I was willing to get it. <laughs> I didn't, but I, I want to normalize to. herpes, not for myself, but for I mean, others. For, like for the community. The movies. It's not like TV. It, it, it annoys me that on TV shows, they're always choosing between two great guys. The main girl has the choice of two great guys. I'm like, show me a single show me one. one. Show me one. Show me She's one. She's like, well, I don't know, because like Michael's hot and sweet, and he's in love with me, Jane but Raphael is hot and sweet. A, a little <laughs> Easter egg for the stands. Yes, exactly. I'm like, well... Oh, Cameron texted me for my birthday, <laughs> the day after and my birthday. Happened, but I changed his name. So I guess that's pretty Slightly. great. <laughs> Slightly. And I'm not being fair. There was something that I was interested in. Uh, we hooked up a few times, and then for the last two weeks, I thought he was ghosting me. But then he texted me on Friday. It turns out his grandma died. Uh, so I'm feeling a lot better. Yeah, that's true as well. And he did end up eventually ghosting me, but now we're actually really close friends. I didn't know her. It's so. just how it works. <laughs> just kind of how it works for I me. I definitely make it harder on myself because I don't use dating apps. But just so many. It's like Bumble, Tinder, Hinge, Happen, Raya. I am on the one app, though, um, where the guy has to message first, and it's only for sex. Uh, it's called and Instagram. that was tea that I spoke before. It was as, like, yes. ubiquitous it as it is. <laughs> does work. I'm also very lazy. I'm a lazy dater. I only want to hook up with guys who live within a five block radius of my apartment. Uh, and I'm in the East Village, so the absolute furthest I will go is Williamsburg. And I don't even really like it there. I feel like all the men in Williamsburg are wearing disguises. This is one of my best jokes. It's like, do you really need glasses and a hat and a beard? Do people in Williamsburg like this joke? <laughs> yeah, because they... What are you hiding from? They identify. Your privileged upbringing? <laughs> I'm from Connecticut. I can see you. <laughs> Then you notice the Hitler Youth character. I was also like, okay, put that way ahead of the curve on that. <laughs> I hate to keep, you know, cheating my own horn. I, I just don't think, like, society or culture uh, has advanced past. I they haven't. No, they really haven't. Two weeks ago. Have you guys been there? It's absolutely beautiful. Just, like, gorgeous architecture. It's amazing. This Almost is a dicier uh, one, but I don't regret it. I know that joke is insensitive to the people who died in 9 11. That's here? so funny. <laughs> If you are, find me after the show. I'll buy you a drink. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm good, actually not super worried. <laughs> Did you ever about do that again? Someone, no. Because I've decided that the next guy I date. Because when be it's shorter sets, party. you can't risk doing a joke like right. that. I just want the fans to blame me when the team does bad. Now I would because nothing matters. Right. That's a legacy I'm comfortable with. I've also always wanted to be referred that's to as a joke wag. That's a joke for the Europeans. Oh, that's they like that? Wag, later. because we don't use wag here. Wives and I just don't, There's I a really show don't on VH1 or something. Yeah, but when people, people say they would have done at a different time. They grew up in a different decade. I definitely think that's true for me. I would have done better in the 40s or 50s, where you fall in love really young, mm-hmm. and then he goes to war and What war in the 40s and 50s? World War II. And then earlier? you just like, settle no, for someone wasn't, else. No, wasn't Pearl Harbor and in like 1947? <laughs> Seems a lot hmm. simpler. So I'm, I'm thinking about taking a hiatus from guys because they're all bad and I don't like them. How'd that work? Yeah. It works. And I know great. that's a generalization, but it's kind of like when I say I don't like bees. I'm sure, there are some really cool bees flying around. But whenever I get close I to one, I wrote that joke at Lakeside Diner <laughs> with Julia and Matt. You know, and safety is important. Thank uh, Julia and Matt would be reading. That's why I, I use a, I use condoms every time. That, that, I did spill there as well. There's a lot of spillage going on. You know, because I don't want an STD, I'd be willing to get one for the right person. <laughs> but I don't actively want one. And the other reason to use condoms and practice safe sex uh, is to prevent children from happening. Uh, I don't want to have kids uh, because I hate snitches. Um, <laughs> They're always like telling on people. You've got like five sets with different yeah, reasons why, why you don't want to have kids. And so the proof is in the pudding, like, so to speak. I know why it's important, and I'm glad there's people willing to do it, but I'm just not one of them. <laughs> and and there's plenty of reasons not to have kids, right? Like, have you ever tried to hold a baby in text? Have it's you? almost impossible. I've never no. touched a baby in my <laughs> life. Part of my life. <laughs> And the only thing that appeals to me about uh, birthing a child is having someone who's genetically predisposed to be I stand by that. Uh, kids are always like, mommy. <laughs> that could be fun. I don't know. I've given it a lot of thought. And I couldn't have a daughter because I hate all females younger than Still me. true. Mm-hmm. And I would only want to have a son if I could guarantee that he'd be gay. I just feel like if I bring another straight white man into the world, like that makes me part of the problem. Bringing a white gay man into the world's not much better. And at gay men is a little right? better. <laughs> the best of both genders, because they're beautiful and soft, but they also get to stick dick in things. Like, <laughs> Michelle like, has a much better joke one. about <laughs> gay men being better. So sort of like a dad. I didn't know that at the time. Uh, and I've only had one gay sexual experience in my entire life. Uh, that was with my ex-boyfriend. Um, <laughs> we'd be having sex, and he'd be like, "Oh, babe, oh." I love you so much. <laughs> That's pretty gay. <laughs> and it is. But I support it now. I think it's, it's like nice. Such a guy's it, girl, it's because you know? of the double meaning of the word gay. I'm such, I'm such a gay guy. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you call I, things I, I don't, that I'm are not like stupid a gay. Type, <laughs> like a pejorative. Uh huh. And my roommate Jake is gay. I don't like when the class like turns around and looks gay. at you. Yes, you do. On the counter, he started getting texts from someone named Melissa. <laughs> And I was Who's like, Melissa? who the fuck is Melissa? Huh? Melissa? She's How fine. do you know her? Is she pretty? She's what color good. is her hair? You met her at work? Am I not Hi, enough for you? How could you do this to me? Do I have to kill Melissa? So then I killed oh, yeah, Melissa. I <laughs> no, what happened was she started following me on Instagram and I was like, Melissa's okay. That, this crowd loved that tag. Most did not. <laughs> I am an ally, obviously. Runs in the family. <laughs> So I, I get really, uh, I get bothered when people say that being gay is unnatural. It is, though. But yeah, well, it's unnatural. Here's the thing, and nature. I've said it before, what's unnatural uh, about putting you know a dick in your butt? unnatural? And also, cars. I have heard other variations Guns. of this joke. I don't think, I think it's just too low-hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, people will come up to me often and say, Mary Beth, your comedy is so smart. And I'm like, yes, but am I pretty? And that's true as well. <laughs> you guys don't have to answer that. Other times people will tell me that I have resting bitch merch. face. This is what uh, I don't oh, have resting merch. bitch face, yeah, yeah, but I don't yeah. have a resting, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm constantly working, and resting bitch face is a social construct. Uh, before I did stand-up comedy, I did improv briefly, uh, and I do miss it sometimes, but people shit on improv a lot. They say there's a lot of bad improv. But you have to remember that's because anyone can do it. Right, like there would probably be a lot of bad surgery if all you had to do was book a room. 
I wonder if improv will ever be a thing again. It's no. just important to remember. It's, over. it's just not worth the risk. No, it's certainly not. Right. And as I said right. before, I really love doing this. It's my favorite thing, uh, and it's keeping me very busy. But uh, I work full time in addition to doing comedy. I work at a startup. Uh, we are disrupting the children's oh, clothing we industry. Mm-hmm. And we did. I had to think about which startup this was that you're working <laughs> at. You remember. Uh, but I was complaining to my dad about it the other day. I was like, you know, I just want to quit my job and do comedy full time. And he was like, well, you better meet a wealthy man. I was like, yeah, you I know, wish give me money. I could still do that joke, but not Rick have a job. Gives me money. I don't want to lie. So I had to retire after I finished this cycle. <laughs> he didn't agree, but I think I'll wear him down. And I, I, it's fine. If comedy doesn't work out, I, of course, I have a backup plan. Uh, I can be a stripper. I support sex workers uh, and strippers. Years. Time's running out, babe. And I'm lucky that as a woman I have <laughs> Shut <that>. up! <laughs> you know, men don't really have that. There's no industry where a man can walk in at any intelligence level and just get a job. Uh, except for finance. Um, See, that's well, a good you joke you guys, also. we've reached the end. And I just want to say, you know, a lot of times comedians will plug their Twitter at the end of their sets, but you can find me at Mary Beth Barone on Venmo because I'm trying to get paid. Um, thank you all so and much. That's, a, that's, that's her. That was a moment in time. What a time capsule. I know, I'm like Cardi B over the credits. Oh my god. What a strange, strange thing that I did. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> so, who's your favorite child then? See, she said it right there. Oh, Mary Beth. You have no favorite. It depends on the day. Who have I had the most fun with you? Is and that, she's not just. Does that mean I love you more? Than I think you are the favorite, no. though. Thank you. As a as a outsider, as an outsider looking in. Well, we did that. Congratulations. How does, it, how does it feel? Feels good. Good. I'm, 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 truly a moment. A moment in history. And and now we can say. We can show her to the world. Be free. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.